Hi you guys! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how I made this Christmas tree cake topper. It was actually really easy um, and it came out just how I was hoping so uh, let's get started. Alright, I worked with modeling chocolate here. Now one thing I just wanted to show you quickly because a lot of people ask this question. Did I mess up my modeling chocolate? I'm trying to use it and it's all crumbly and then they end up throwing it in the garbage and I'm like, no, 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 don't throw it in the garbage because it's not messed up. It depends on your atmosphere. I'm working in a really cold atmosphere. It's winter, it's dry, super dry, super cold and depending on if you, you know, have a little bit less uh, corn syrup in your modeling chocolate for some reason, it can be crumbly like this. If you just start kneading it back together, the warmth from your hands is going to bring it back together and it will be perfect once again. You can also pop it into the microwave for five second increments to soften it up for you so you don't have to go through the trouble of trying to knead it back together as it, so it's not as hard to do. But don't throw it away. It definitely is crumbly at first often. You just have to knead, knead, knead and it will get back to where you want it to be. Okay. Modeling chocolate. So I used um, leaf green to get my modeling chocolate to the color I wanted with just a touch, just a touch of black to turn it into a more of a deeper foresty green for anybody who is wondering how to get uh, the Christmas tree color. Okay. Um, and there, there's my color. That's how it worked out. All right. Sugar cones, Keebler sugar cones. I actually ordered these on Amazon. They came very well packaged. Um, you can see the styrofoam pack they came in and in this bubble, um, bubble wrapping. None of them were broken. It came out perfect and they work perfectly for this particular application because they're just the size I wanted them to be. For this full project, and by the way, the full project of how to make this red truck Christmas cake, including the presents, the truck, the puffy snow, all of it is on Cake Heads for members if anybody wants to come and sign up over there. But to make this Christmas tree, I printed out a picture of exactly how big I wanted it to be. And the cone was perfect for this. Okay, so I have this Ateco leaf cutter set. And I'm going to use this one specific leaf cutter. Here are all the leaf cutters in the set. But this particular one worked perfectly for this Christmas tree. I just experimented and, and this ended up working great. Okay, so I, I'm not rolling my modeling chocolate too thin. Okay, not too thin, but not super, super chunky either. All right, and I'm cutting out little uh, cutouts of this leaf. And then I'm going to use my Dresden tool, like so, the pointy edge of it, and I'm going to push in little um, slits into the the tips of these leaves. Okay, like so. <laughs> um, this is just to make sure that once I wrap these around my sugar cone, I will still have that piney look to them because obviously they're not pine leaves, but we're trying to make them look like pine leaves. Okay, now just using a tiny bit of water onto the back inner edge, just a tiny bit. We don't want it sloppy. We don't want it dripping. Um, use my um, gloved finger to kind of rub it in just a tiny bit. And now we're going to attach to our sugar cone. And I am just, you can see, just kind of uh, attaching that edge um, so that it is like this. I, I might as well not even try to explain it. It's just better to see it. I'll mess it up if I try to explain exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> but I've got that first one on there. It sticks beautifully. I'm just overlapping the edge of the second one slightly onto that first one. And I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm just overlapping slightly. And I'm going to do that in kind of a, you know, circle-ish formation. See what happens when I try to explain. <laughs> um, okay, and that works out well. If you need to add another one, you can overlap even more. That's totally fine if they don't line up super well. Um, and that's going to be the beginning. I'm working obviously from the bottom up. Now for the second row. So I'm just going to keep cutting out more and more of these until um, I have all that I need. Um, the second row. I'm, I'm lifting it up just a little bit. Um, I'm adding this so that the center of this one is where the, the row underneath it where they overlap. 
Does that make sense? Okay. The center of this one is where the bottom two overlap each other. And you can see I lifted it up so you can see I've just, just lifted this next row up slightly so there's a little gap between the rows. Okay. And this is the beauty of using modeling chocolate. And then I'm adding them the same way I did the first row by overlapping the edges just a little bit. The beauty of using modeling chocolate rather than fondant is that they won't flop around on you, the edges. They'll stay where you put them, which is a really beautiful thing and the magic, part of the magic of using modeling chocolate. But you do have to keep in mind, use your Dresden tool to kind of lift them and put them where you want them. Once they set, so maybe after, you know, like a half an hour, you're not going to want to touch the edges because they will break off more easily than they would if they were fondant or gum paste. They don't dry as stiff as gum paste would. Um, but as long as you don't touch them after they've set, then you should be absolutely fine. And, they, and um, you know, I didn't break any of them off in this whole project. You just have to be a little careful. Okay, so this is how we're looking so far. Um, and, you know, using the cone really is just a beautiful thing because it's just super easy. This whole tree was super easy. I really wanted it to look like a Christmas tree and was not confident I could get it to, but I was very, very happy with how this turned out. All right, now we're getting towards the top. So obviously we're using less. We're still overlapping. We're overlapping a little bit more than we were down below right? But now I'm getting to the, to the, the very, very top. So, um, you know, keep adding until you have just a little tip left. So you can see I added that one and then this one is, is overlapping so that the ends are touching. Okay. And, and then one more. It was the ends were almost touching on that last one that I added. Not completely, but almost. And now I just have this little tip left. Okay, so we've got a good look going there. Um, so now I'm using two more pieces once I have this little tip left. I'm adding water onto most of the back of this one. And I'm actually placing it on top and kind of pinching the top a little bit. Okay, so that covers all of the sugar cone. And now for this very last piece, before I put it on, I'm going to kind of wrap it around itself to create, um, see how I wrapped it and I created like a little point in the center by wrapping, by wrapping the edges. And then I just place it on top and kind of pinch the center top. I'll, I'll, I'll be back on camera a second. There we go. <laughs> pinch the center top so it comes to a point and I have created in a super easy but I would say pretty effective Christmas tree. Um, you could go into more detail if you want with that, but I knew that I was going to be covering mine with snow because this is outside in the snowy north. So um, in order to add the snow easily, um, I decided instead of just uh, putting powdered sugar over top, I wanted to make sure it stuck. And I was afraid that the powdered sugar would blow off too easily um, if I didn't do this, I didn't want to add water because water has the potential to um, dissolve the powdered sugar. So I'm using shortening and I'm adding shortening to many of the leaves. Just a little dab of it. It's going to be, in, you can add like, you know, clumps of it because then it's going to be covered by the powdered sugar and it will just look like a clump of snow. Um, you can use a little tool to kind of hold up the leaf, the leaf, the leaf, leaf. <laughs> What are you trying to say, McGreevy? Um, so that it doesn't break on you while you're trying to add the powder trigger. Or I'm sorry, while you're trying to add the shortening. And then I just kind of dump my powder trigger on it with my sugar shaker here. And that gives me a snowy, snowy Christmas tree that I was very, very happy with. And I just wanted to add another little extra touch. I wanted to add some red berries on. So you can um, buy some... Uh, red nonpareils, but I didn't have any in the house. So I took a piece of wax paper and um, some airbrush color because it uh, evaporates so quickly and leaves red behind. Um, the, the moisture evaporates quickly because it's alcohol based. And um, I added just a little bit of white to red so it wasn't so dark red. And um, put that on some wax paper and rolled my white nonpareils around on it and then let them dry. 
And then I picked them up in clumps like so and added them on top of the snow. And um, they pretty much stayed in place. They didn't move around too much on me. I just really love the look of berries on snow. So I just wanted to add that little touch. But you could add um, sugar pearls and all different colors to make it look like Christmas lights. Um, you know, whatever you want to do. I have this little mold. I think it's a Martha Stewart mold. It's a 3D star, which is really fun. So I added um, some modeling chocolate into the smallest star on the mold and it popped out and looks like this which is really cool and I painted it with edible arts um, gold paint also I'm using this is a painted with green airbrush color um, whole wheat spaghetti uncooked whole wheat is stronger than white so keep that in mind I rolled it around in some green airbrush paint but you really wouldn't have to do that I did that for a previous project um, I'm using a toothpick to create a little hole in the top of my tree because I don't want to break my spaghetti stick by pushing that too hard. But then I had this little hole so that I could then insert my whole wheat spaghetti stick instead of using wires because wires freak me out in case a little kid grabs this and wants to eat it. I don't want a wire in their throat. So um, I have a glob of shortening on the back of my star. Um, you could add this m in a multitude of different ways, but this is just was just easy for my brain. A glob of shortening used as glue um, on the back of the star. You stick it right to the little piece of whole wheat spaghetti. Um, so it's sitting on top and then you can break off that little extra tip of spaghetti on the top there and the thing didn't budge I brought this cake to a party that I was attending we transported it um, the star never moved it was perfect and super easy way to get it on there so there's my finished Christmas tree if you want to see how I made the rest of this project the Christmas presents and um, the truck which I'm going to show you in a minute creating the 2d 3d ish Christmas truck and the puffy snow on the top tier and putting it all together two-tone effect on the buttercream finish come on over to kids.com become a member join our cake kids family of members we have an awesome time together hanging out in a group and troubleshooting asking questions solving problems sharing our work having a lot of fun Thanks a lot for watching. See you later.